so hello everyone. So uh, actually it's, uh, it's going to be interesting because it's the last talk I will be doing on this topic because um, it will be more like a retrospective. Um, we have uh, 20 minutes, it's short. Um, and uh, because basically, uh, as I will explain to the end, now the case is in the hand of the judges. We just have to wait what the judge will, will say. But um, yeah, um, we, we named this talk Pushing Back Against Regular Overreach because basically what we see happening is there, is, uh, there are laws, right, about anti-money laundering uh, and regulation in the, crypt in the financial world. Uh, some of them are kind of okay where uh, as a professional you want to like play by the rules and like everyone should play by the same rules. But what you see in crypto space is that these rules don't apply the same way just because it's crypto. And, uh, and in addition of this, there's also a lot of bully, bullying that is happening. So um, I'll go over this. So uh, Alexis made a presentation of me. Uh, indeed, I'm uh, uh, from the NIM team also, and we have a stand here. We have a workshop later today at 4.30 upstairs for NIM. Um, it's about privacy also, of course. Uh, that's my main theme in my whole uh, career. So <clears throat> who are the players uh, uh, around and uh, around regulation in, uh, in, uh, in Switzerland and why this is a, a bit a weird uh, system that is happening? So. Uh, any, any, uh, uh, there is an institution called FINMA in Switzerland, which is the financial market authority. And they're the uh, legal authority to actually um, imp um, uh, supervise uh, the anti-money laundering law. Um, and uh, they are helped with by another type of organization, which is called self-regulatory organization in Switzerland. And they take part of the work. So if you're a bank, you go to... Uh, uh, you go to FINMA, but if you're a broker uh, and like a Bitcoin broker or a cash exchange, you go to uh, SRO. Um, they're both defined in law and uh, they do both define, uh, build the same kind of uh, rules, uh, but they have a link together. FINMA is also supervising the SROs. So BITI is a Bitcoin broker since 2014 and uh, uh, it has, uh, it's running ATM where you can buy Monero in Switzerland for cash. So it's pretty cool since 2000, since, uh, five years at least. Um, and, but there's a lot of pressure against those, <laughs> the, the, against this. Uh, and so we don't have any re direct relationship with FINMA. We have a relationship with SROs. But what happens is that this FATF, which you've heard of, the uh, financial uh, task force, um, is actually uh, putting up reg uh, recommendations. And there, those recommendations goes into the FINMA without any uh, legal process and goes into SROs and goes into uh, the crypto world, uh, the, the broker side, without having a way to, uh, to respond in a, in a normal way. We cannot just push back. We cannot, um, yeah, there, there's, there's the legal process is not a democratic legal process. So what happens? So, uh, in 2014, uh, the Swiss government was like super, super in advance. And that's why in Switzerland you have this kind of like a large uh, crypto scene is because they said in 2014, just follow the law and it's fine, it's going to be fine for crypto. Which means the law says for cash exchange, it's a limit of 5,000 KYC free transactions uh, um, per transaction or per day. So that's pretty pretty cool. So we started up with the Bitcoin ATMs, 5,000 bucks in one go if you want, online payment, 5,000 bucks if you want, uh, without KYC. All good. 2021, if ATF um, uh, says, um, uh, no, this is not 5,000, it's, it's 1,000. And FINMA just say, okay, yeah, it's 1,000 also for crypto in Switzerland. And they push this without any, uh, uh, any, uh, any laws which have been changed. So they change the law basically because the law says 5,000. And then in the same year, they, um, um, uh, so they, they implement this indeed, uh, the, the, sa the same year. Uh, at that time, we didn't, uh, push back a lot because we go the, from 5,000 per day to 1,000 per day. It was kind of okay for like for a random person. It's 30,000 bucks for the whole month. I mean, that's okay, pretty okay. But, but then in 2023, what happens? They say, oh no, it's not 1,000 per day. It's 1,000 per month. And that changes the whole game because you also have to be able to verify that, uh, the, 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 it's through one month, the same person is not buying more. And this is something that is, has, 
was not requested by FATF. It's something that FINMA came up by themselves, and they do this regularly, so it, there's an expression for it. It's called Swiss Finish. And if you type up Swiss Finish uh, on the internet, you will find all the cases where FINMA will just take some rules that exist uh, in the world, and they will say, well, we'll make it just even better, right? <laughs> so, uh, it's all a power play. It's all a power play because we're not... So Switzerland is a hyper-democratic country except when it comes down to finance. And that's why uh, it uh, creates a lot of tension. So there's a power play happening. So uh, FINMA, which is mostly made out of uh, bankers and lawyers who works for the banks and auditors who works for the banks, they come they go together. And also, tiny detail from FINMA. It doesn't cost a, a cent to the federal government. They take their money only from the banks. So they don't have a, a national budget for FINMA, right? So they're like very autonomous in terms of budget. So they kind of can do whatever they want, they think. Um, so they control the SROs. But um, the SROs are self regulatory organizations who are providing rules for the um, for the, the the operators, but uh, what happens is that there is this weird trick where Finma is supervising the SROs and need to make sure that they are following the law. They they cannot instruct them to do stuff. They ha they just supervise them, making sure that they follow the law. But there is like uh, emails going on, and there is pressure uh, on the side, uh, which is covered by secrecy because Finma is not. Uh, um, is the is excluded is the only institution in the, in Switzerland excluded from transparency law. That's a very convenient stuff to have, um, and uh, they um, uh, they give instructions by email, and we got one of those emails, so we are suing them. And so whenever the rule ha ha comes here, you have no way to fight them because uh, you cannot fight against a secret uh, decision uh, in Switzerland. You have to be aware of this, right? So, but now this uh, we we got one, and uh, we are able to uh, push this in front of the the, the judge. So what did they violate? Uh, yeah, they write a secret email uh, where they say that they implement the 1,000 rule per month, and suddenly the directives of the uh, of the SROs are changing. So this is uh, more this is a public document, and uh, we can um, we are forced to uh, implement this rule. But when we claim back to the SRO saying, "But where does it come from?" They said, "Well, Finma told us to do so, and uh, we cannot show you the the, the emails, the documentation, or why." So here's the um, here's the, what they have to uh, to to implement this. So why did they decide one day to send an email saying now it's going to be one thousand per month? Because of this article. So if some people uh, are from Switzerland or Germany, you know that Blick is a kind of like the trash news of Switzerland. So basically, Finma is uh, reacting based on just information in a trash news, which is not evidence-based material, right? So, um, or research or whatever. They, they don't have any data in reality. They just read the article one day and they see that uh, drug dealers are using the uh, Bitcoin ATMs uh, of the trains, not ours, of the trains, uh, of the uh, Swiss uh, train uh, company to actually uh, buy uh, drugs. Okay. Um, what is also interesting is that in Switzerland there is a national risk assessment that uh, every country has to do uh, with FATF. And in 2024, um, it, it's done by the Swiss Federal Police. And basically what they say is that uh, they don't have any data and they should have data. So, so they're, they're, they're uh, publicly admitting that they have no data. In 2019, there was, or 18, there was another re national risk as assessment which was saying that, as an introduction, they were saying, we don't have any evidence of money laundering with crypto, um, but still the risk is so high we have to do something, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so right now we, we come into a situation and there's more and more report coming out where they take decisions based on no evidence and the research material that comes out proves that any mon anti money laundering laws are not effective. Uh, you have less than 0.1% effectiveness. Uh, and uh, now there's even a, a, a ratio which has um, appeared that for every euro 
that is caught by the system, it costs 200 euros to get it. So the, it's the most inefficient policy since 20 years. It's going to blow up like the war against drugs, which have um, been shown as inefficient. Um, that one will also at one point explode, have to explode by itself because the cost for the society is too high. And we're part of like countering this movement, of course. Um, so, so yeah, so what happened is that the industry uh, from the start also uh, engaged a lot. So we, we gave a lot of data to, uh, to them, showing them the reality. Um, and, uh, and basically we were pointing out that uh, uh, what they're doing is actually wrong technically, but it's also uh, wrong because they don't have uh, any, any data. So at the end they pushed and they admitted, yeah, they just don't like anonymous transactions. That's what they don't like and they want to fight it whatever the cost is. But we organized ourselves for a long time, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we took part of, so Switzerland is a very, transparent system, even though I told you that um, the FINMA has this secrecy for their own documentation, but they still have to publish some documents and there is a consult consultation process. So what is interesting is that this story of the case actually started five years ago where we constantly took part in the consultation process. And what happened in the consultation process is that, um, so here it, it, uh, you, you, if you read German you can see, it says, well, Basically, everyone said, no, it's a bad idea to implement this rule of 1,000 per month, but we do it anyway, right? Because, because crypto. So, um, so here, what we did, um, so when you have, we don't have any relationship with FINMA, so we have to uh, initiate. This is a legal process that um, if you want to uh, attack someone in front of a court, you need something that they attack. You have a, a, a reason to, to attack, right? So we don't have any rela direct relationships. We know that they decide something, it affects us. How do we prove this? Right? So the first thing we do is a very simple. We wrote, that was one and a half years ago, we wrote a letter and say, hey Finma, we're Billy. Uh, does this new rule that you uh, pushed in your, um, in your text, does this new rule applies to us? Yes or no? And, um, and they were uh, uh, in front of a dilemma because they know they're not supposed to set up this rule. It has, it's the SRO who needs to set up these rules and the SRO should follow the law. And in this case, they were bullied by the, by the FIMA. So if they say yes, uh, then they agree that they did the wrong process. Instead of changing the law, they changed their internal stuff and they pushed the, 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 the SROs to do this. If they say no, um, then uh, they agree that this law, uh, that this rule doesn't apply to us, right? So um, uh, they, they have this like weird um, uh, moment where they cannot say yes, they cannot say no. Does this rule apply to us or not? So what did they say? They say we're not competent to say. So let me rephrase it. So there's a new rule coming from FINMA. They make a public consultation process about this. Uh, and then suddenly it appears into other places like SRO. It applies to us. We ask them, are we supposed to apply this rule, which is like really badly made? And they say, we're not competent to say. That's really weird for uh, illegal for some of you who understand law here. You will find it a bit uh, weird in the democracy. So the first thing we did is we went for denial of justice. Oh, you don't want to answer us. Okay, we'll make it, it's a denial of justice case. Uh, just for the small story, at the beginning, they, dis, they just didn't want to answer at all. And so we opened the first case in July 2014, uh, 2023. Uh, we opened the first case of completely denial of justice. And uh, even before we, uh, we got to the end, uh, we got the, they, they sent us uh, this decision, official decision to say they're not competent. So we got this oppo what is called opposable uh, decision. So the, 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 what, now we open a second case, uh, which is uh, ongoing, which says, okay, uh, we think they're competent and we give arguments for this. And uh, uh, I mean, it does have impact on us. And there's two main things that they do wrong. Uh, the, the main thing, the two main things is that they use a document, which is called the FINMA ordinance, which is not the correct document for um, crypto brokers, right? So you have this structure where the, the, this, this FINMA ordinance is meant for banks. 
and uh, uh, and inside this, during the report, they 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 talk about Bitcoin ATMs, and they talk about making this special rule just for Bitcoin ATMs, while no Bitcoin ATM provider in Switzerland is uh, subject to that ordinance. Right? So uh, clearly, um, uh, in their reports, they make they use the wrong tool for this. And then the consultation process went wrong. And it went wrong for multiple things. So one, we sent out, uh, uh, we participated. A lot of people participated, about 200 people, also individuals. And everyone said it was a bad idea. And they said, no, we are doing it anyway. And that's not how a consultation process works, right? If everyone says it's a bad idea, maybe they should dig in, right? Um, and, uh, and what they did, even worse, is that uh, the basic rule was to say below 1,000 francs it's per month, and then they changed it after the consultation process, and they specifically said, oh, the rule applies on anonymous payment systems. And so this, they implemented this without even going through a consultation process, and for you to understand is that in Switzerland until now, there was no a legal concept of privacy coin or anonymous payment system didn't exist. And they added this uh, after a consultation process that went wrong. So it, it really points out to what they're really afraid. So um, uh, this is, um, this is the, the case you can follow. Um, now two things about the case which are interesting and then uh, is that uh, we're fighting FINMA. FINMA is uh, around is, is secured around uh, secrecy. So what we did is we did everything public. So you will find all the documents of the, the discussion between Biddy, the SRO, the, the court case, everything there, completely transparent. And, and what is really interesting is that they never, I mean, maybe I did something wrong because I, I leave all the names of all the lawyers, the, the, the people working at FINMA, the phone numbers, everything is there, right? I could have done something wrong there. They never said anything to the judge. They kept saying, we're not competent, we're not competent, we're not competent. So the second thing that we did, we did a crowdfunding. So now the crowdfunding is closed because we raised from the community, from the Swiss community, uh, almost 70K to fund this campaign. Uh, so right now we don't need any more money, so it's closed. Maybe it will reopen, uh, reopen at one point. Uh, but we came to the end of it. Is now we went through the whole process, and it's in the hand of the judge to actually uh, decide to um, uh, to do something. Fun fact: uh, Monero was one of the currency used for fundraising, and we got some donations from the, communi the Monero community. So thank you. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, and this is, this is also something which they're not used to, right? Crowdfunded, open source case, again, the Swiss authority. Um, uh, they were so surprised that for the small story is that uh, there was an article that you can still find, it's in German, but you can find where someone is like surprised that this case, or no, that, the, that, the, uh, uh, that the consultation process went kind of wrong. And they thought it was even, um, they were suggesting that it was a foreign broker who was trying to make foreign influence to the Swiss community to push for this. And he could have, he could have, he could have just talked to uh, the local community, to us, and asked them, hey, why did you do this? We were all Swiss people uh, fighting this, and the whole industry is actually behind. Everything is transparent. So, yeah. So follow the case. Hopefully, we'll update with the um, with the result when they come, and now it's in the hand of the judge. Uh, who knows how how much time it will take? But um, yeah, thank you again for your support, and follow the case.